So yes, this discussion will be focused on coding, uh, in particular, how to do QML with existing frameworks. So this is existing models, existing demos, tutorials, stuff like that. It's a very practical um, session. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Kocek. I'm the founder CEO of Chemical Q Device. Uh, here for discussion 99, this is Python PyTorch quantum machine learning ports or models for potential medical use. And so I am really excited about this because it's where the rubber meets the road as far as, the, as, far as coding goes. And if you do a, a search on the internet, sometimes it can be hard to find demos. So unless you're a super expert and you can design your own models from scratch and you know do many of these things, uh, a tutorials or demos can really help. So in particular, uh, Hugging Face is really in recent you know years picking up the speed as far as these demos. So there's eighty over eighty of these available. So it's just it's very simple. You just click on CoLab which is a Google product and it sends it straight to. So at the top of it, they actually say that it's um, for uh, PyTorch. Uh, so I, I'm not sure quite what's going on, but I'm finding a lot more with PyTorch as opposed to TensorFlow. These are the two big ones. And you'll see things like object detection, reconstruction, segmentation, language modeling, uh, optical uh, character recognition, uh, zero shot classification. These are kind of like, you know, the buzzwords are like the, the top of the leaderboards if you look on their site. And you could also type in uh, Hugging Face Chat and it'll design a model for you. However, it's harder to share that, right? So that I, I typically pick the ones that they, they post on the website. And this goes as far as NVIDIA. So they have Torch uh, Tensor RT e examples. And this is more for inference, so high performance uh, with low latency. And uh, Citronet, EfficientNet, MLM, uh, pre-trained ResNet 50, which is very common, dynamic shapes and more. Okay, so I'll show you how this fits in with the code. So what we could do with uh, basically Kiskit or Penny Lane and how this ties into the torch aspect of it. Now, keep in mind, these notebooks are written in Python. And then I'll I'll show you in specific which parts are the quantum code, which parts Python, which pon, uh, part is torch. And so you'll hear this word port. So I, I watched some of these, you know, Penny Lane videos and they say, that's what we do is we just port it, you know, using, you know, um, you know, this torch.nn type of uh, code with the quantum code into it. So it's effectively, you know, by the time it reaches where it needs to be, you know, in binary, in Python, you know, everything's good, you know, PyTorch, so on and so forth. And the way this works in Qiskit is you have torch connector. So this is very important. Torch Connector makes Neural Network, which is a class, available as a PyTorch module. Okay, so this is just like any other PyTorch module. It's just, it's doing things quantumly real quick and then going back to classically. And then it's similar in Penny Lane, so they call a, a Q node um, and the algorithm in it as a, a Python function converted to torch.nn layer. So the whole thing is the universality of it all, um, trying to, you know, you, Penny Lane describes that like you can do everything within the Penny Lane library and then go back into, uh, you know, if it's within Torch. Now with data sets in medical, it's basically inserting what you need. So there's Med, MNIST, uh, there's 2D and 3D images. Uh, I've done a lot with Google Kaggle. It tends to be like very quick to get as far as some early R&D. And then maybe later on, you might be looking at healthcare data, healthdata.gov and, and Lonnie laboratory neuroimages. So those are specific more, you know, multimodal images, um, you know, co collections of studies, you know, uh, together. And if there's any questions, feel free to raise your hand or you can also put in chat. Um, so this is the kiss kit portion of it. So it's not, it wasn't quite apparent to me that you could do all of this with Qiskit. And basically this is building off of a, a demo. So uh, the IBM Qiskit Torch Connector, as I said before, makes the makes neural network class available as PyTorch module. So neural network is an interface. It's an abstract class for all of the networks under neural network for Qiskit. So the ones they focus on is estimator QNN and sampler QNN, and they're different because an estimating where QNN basically does, um, you know, it's based on quantum mechanical observables, where sampler QNN is based on samplers from samples from the measurements. 
It's a little bit trickier to do sampler QNN. So this is kind of like, you know, how you're actually trying to import, use the, the quantum code for PyTorch. It requires an extra step, um, meaning that the matrices have to be non-sparse, which I, I don't think is desirable. So the ones I go over, I think it more focus on the estimator QNN. So you've probably seen these terms if you've taken a, a, a Qiskit ter, uh, course before. And basically, so Torch Connector allows for training of the quantum neural network. So whatever in this neural network class, whether it's estimator QNN or it's sampler QNN, um, it's, it's to train. So by training, I mean, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence, but now you're training the rotations of quantum bits as opposed to different weights and biases in, in deep learning. And it's doing all of this with PyTorch's automated automatic differentiation engine, which is a big deal, um, you know, for PyTorch. And think of it as it's probably more compatible than what you're thinking in terms of quantum, quantum computing, quantum machine learning in, in these. So if you've done a lot with, you know, uh, Torch, you're going to use their optimizers. So Adam, um, there's Adam W, there's a number of these, and these are available under torch.optim. And they're all available, you know, when you're doing, you know, Qiskit, uh, with this hybrid coding here. And then also torch.nn, which is, you know, layers, uh, the loss functions, all of the loss functions are also available. So figure when you're you're going through your documentation with uh, PyTorch, you're seeing all of this uh, and it's, it's available to you even though you're inserting quantum code, right? And to run a notebook, and I'll show you the next slide, um, you're still importing Torch, Torch Vision, Torch.Optin, Torch.NN. This is, you know, at the top of the, you know, demo or, or notebook as usual. And then defining data loaders as in classical notebooks, and then also defining QNN and the hybrid model, which I'll show you in the next slide, and then training it. So does anybody have any questions at this point regarding anything? So, so Qiskit or PyTorch? And then, so we'll spend some time on this because this is really important. If you can under, understand a, a section of code like this, you are on your way to inserting uh, Qiskit quantum machine learning code into PyTorch. So we're gonna start with the second block, or I'm sorry, the block to the left where it says define and create QNN. So a lot of this should be familiar if done uh, Qiskit before. So basically a feature map is the embedding layer. It's where classical data comes in and it gets converted into uh, quantum data. In, in this case, we're using a ZZ feature map with uh, two qubits. Now the onsets or the variational layer, we're using a real amplitudes also set to two qubits. And it's only basically one repetition of that. Now QC equals quantum circuit two sets it all up. And then you're using QC.compose to pull this all together. And then the circuit at the bottom here is representative of, of this top block of text. Okay, so are, are there any questions at this point? So then the next part is where we're setting up with, uh, so remember neural network, all one word is Qiskit, is this abstract class that's over estimator QNN. So we're using estimator QNN with the circuit and with these parameters. So in this particular case, it looks like the input parameters equals feature map parameters. Uh, this relates to the feature map, which is the embedding layer. And then the weight parameters equals onsats, uh, dot parameters. This relates to real amplitude. So this is all the trainable or a portion of the code or the AI part of the code or the machining learning of the code. If you just had stationary um, <coughs> gates, that, you know, an RX, RY, RZ, you could use that for embedding. Um, but typically, the you want to get this differentiable aspect of it, similar to deep learning. And this is where you see parameters come in. So I believe both of these blocks, so this block um, goes up into this C naught here. It's basically the second to last C naught is the embedding layer. And then the second one is uh, real amplitudes, which is the variational layer. Okay, so this is returned as QNN. And then we also have, this was in the middle of a notebook. So they use QNN for as an arbitrary term and equals create QNN, which goes back up here. So there's three different QNNs. Okay, so there's QNN, QNN4 and create QNN. And, and these have to be in the right positions in the notebooks. 
Does anybody have <laughs> any experience with this or any questions at, at this point? I saw we got some new people uh, kind of join as well. And then on the right is, is basically, if you're familiar with it, so this class net, this module, and then this uh, defined function, the super dunder in it, dunder, this is, this is in, been in tor torch for years, okay? So in this particular one, and you see I put it's customizable, is a convolutional neural networks. So as you may know, convolutional neural networks are composed of, you know, convolutional layers, pooling layers, um, and you'll see these at the bottom. So the first two layers are are using okay. So this is this is PyTorch. So conv two d two d is PyTorch, and then you'll see it used twice. And these ones and twos and twos and sixteens relate to different uh, aspects of it, typically dimensions and and other things too. And then if you've uh, basically been following deep learning over the past several years, dropout has been uh, proven to be effective. It basically skips some of the layers during the training um, to avoid repetition. So there's a dropout layer. And then here you see this fully connected layer, fully connected, this dot self dot FC one, 256 comma 64. So this means that the inputs equals the outputs. That's what fully connected means. And the next one, self.fc2 equals linear 64 comma 2. The 2 has to be a 2 because the quantum circuit is a 2 over here. Okay, and you can actually see it better on the circuit down here. So ho hopefully this is making sense. Now, this is to set up so the torch connector is, is processed correctly. So you'll see a self.qnn, which is this qnn from over here on the left, equals torch connector qnn. And then the last one is one one, they say for one dimension output. Okay, so you know, this basically it it has to um you know it has to mesh with dimensions with the rest of the code. And the tricky part lies in the next part because a lot of times this this first portion I can get right. I'm working on three other ports with this, um, you know, Kiskit and Penny Lane, but the second part is a little trickier because self comma X for uh, forward um, method here, X relates to the data set. So in this particular case, the, it's an MNIST 10 class uh, data set. And that's the way this one should look. So there's a re ReLU function, which is rectified linear uh, units function, uh, max pooling, which is, it goes convolution, convolutional and pooling. And then another ReLU, another pooling layer, dropout. Uh, and then you'll see here, view, ReLU. And then this bottom part here uh, uh, refers to the QNN from the left, okay? So X equals self dot FC, FC2 X. And then you'll have the self dot QNN X. So you can see that it's, it's similar to the fully connected layers up here. Um, and then here, uh, self dot Q and on X, and then this is the, the corresponds to this last fully connected layer. And this is in their notebook. I tried making this better. I tried changing feature, feature map, qubits, real amplitudes, uh, layers. It's it's pretty well optimized as it is. I, they were able to get 100%, although I, I could, in theory, get lower loss uh, than they did. Are there any questions at this point? So this is, you know, you want to look at it like it's a Python notebook, right? It's a Python no notebook. And at that same time, I had, earlier in the code, you had to import ZZ feature map. I had to import real amplitudes, uh, quantum circuit as well, just, you know, for the tidiness of the slide. Um, and then you want to look at it like you have this Python notebook and I needed Qiskit over here. And then to get the QNN, QNN4 and create QNN. And then over here, when this is still Python, okay, this, uh, you know, define init self, it's Python with these, you know, variables or, uh, I'm sorry, uh, parameters or arguments. And then, you know, where it starts going into COM2D and all of these, this is all PyTorch. And the whole port purpose of this is basically to get the quantum part into PyTorch. And that's torch connector. And to do that, linear, this fully connected layer before, and then also the fully connected layer afterwards was needed at this point.
Awesome. So uh, any other questions or comments at this point? And, you know, feel free to put in the chat or you could also raise your hand. So if you if your dream is to do quantum machine learning, this is the type of stuff you'll, you're you going to have to be doing. You know, it's it's very, <laughs> you know, line by line uh, and even, it, you know, getting to a more thorough explanation that I just gave right there is that's what's needed. Right. Because uh, say if there's a new feature and there's no AI to help you out, that type of stuff. Now we're going to switch over to Penny Lane. So I know a number of you have uh, either code in Penny Lane or um, Qiskit. So Qiskit is IBM, Penny Lane is by Xanadu. And uh, basically, the first thing you do is setting up this Q node uh, to interface with Torch.nn. And as I mentioned before, they say you can use any combination of device operations and measurements valid in penny lane okay so when you're doing your quantum algorithm before it goes into torch uh that's you have all of penny lane to to utilize and with arguments you have to label them as inputs they said this is it's it's particular it's not quite apparent right away and then um other arg arguments are you know parameters uh, are treated as trainable weights i.e if you're coming from a deep learning background uh, a lot of these terms should be very familiar with you. Um, you know, what's trainable, what's not, what's, you know, what gets updated over the course of the circuit. And then you also have, uh, so basically, Torchlight class of QNN module converts QNode to building block of Torch.NN. And then um, weight shapes dictionary, which I'll show you on the next slide, is created for the trainable weights. So these are adjustable. Look at it like that. And the goal is this is this one line here. Q layer, which is we're calling this a generic Q layer, equals this front part here, QML.QNN.Torch layer. Okay. And then it has the Q node, which has the circuit. And then it also has the weight shapes, which are, you know, these uh, parameters that update themselves over time. Now the Q node can now be treated just like any other torch.nn layer since it's in the qml.qnn.torch layer format. And the model I included here is in the demo. So it's uh, the Penny Lane sequential model. So in this specific case, it's very simple. So the, the Qiskit one before, it's the layer is kind of like, um, you know, with other convolution and pooling layers. This one just has a simple classical layer up front and a simple classical layer at the end there. Um, you know, so you have input data or X, and then you have um, your Ys and your uh, soft max function at the end there. And then non-sequential, which is the code I'm going to go over in the next slide, that in specific is, um, you know, it's a little bit trickier. So you could look at the code in the notebook if you just want to do sequential. Uh, but you'll see that, you know, the, the forward method is needed in order to do that. So, and feel free if you have any questions or if you want to raise your hand as well. And then, so this is the non-sequential method. So I was able to include some more, some of the more, well, Penny Lane just does things different too, but import Penny Lane as QML, okay? So this is a Python notebook and... Penny Lane has privilege to call Penny Lane uh, QML. So every time you see QML, it's re relating to the Penny Lane library, okay? And then, so we're gonna set the number of equals equals to two, qubits equals to two, and then the device, it's called dev equals device. You can do GPUs and this type of stuff um, in, in this section. QML de device is equal to default.qubit, and the number of wires is equal to the number of qubits, okay? So as you, you see here, if we set any e qubits equals to two, in these, each of these green boxes, we'll just look at the top one here. You'll see a top wire and a bottom wire, okay? So that's corresponding to wires equals uh, n qubits. And then you have the, it's called the Q node decorator here, and you could do other things with changing the differentiation method. This is in, in um, the documentation, i.e., dev comma, you know, uh, you know, diff method equals uh, auto grad, those types of things. Now, in this particular case, remember from before that for Penny Lane, every time you call inputs, it means that it's non-trainable, okay? So when you see inputs for an angle embedding, the angle embedding template or this, uh, they call it template, um, you know, onsets, these types of terms. So inputs, this one does not get trained over time but the one that has weights does. So you can 
this is a very simple circuit. You can have many more uh, different types of templates. You can, you know, change things. You can change, so it defaults to an X gate. So this is angle embedding, uh, which is um, which is an RX. And you can change it to a RY or RZ by putting, you know, angle equals whatever in, inside these parentheses, okay? And then basic entangling layers is more like it is the variational layer. Now, since we only have two qubits, you can't do much. Like if you're change, you know, the uh, the ratio of uh, these are all adjustable through code of the um, so rotational gates to uh, entangling gates, you know, that you don't see quite that effect with only two qubits. And that's why it's hard to improve some of these. Um, but basically this end line here, QML.xval, you'll see it all the time, QML poly Z, it's measuring it. And when this happens, where there's two qubits, there's four possibilities, two to the two to the n, where n is equal to two qubits. And then so you have zero, 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 one, uh, one, zero, or one, one are the outputs in binary. So every mini batch that you take, just like in deep learning, is that it's going to output these uh numbers in binary. So the if you have something that's, you know, 10 mini batches with, you know, 100 apiece, then that's a thousand, you know, so that's going to take what 10 times. So the it's going to run through the quantum circuit like deep learning 10 times. It's going to uh, do the weights function. That one's going to be optimized, not inputs. So you kind of have a, a gist of like how this works compared to deep learning. So in this particular case, they say n layers is equal to six. And I, I believe in this case, n layers, they're using within weights as another parameter to, um, you know, to optimize, to, to get better results. And then here it is. So this is this is what you want. So you want q layers equal to qml.qnn.torchlayer, and then it has q node and weight shapes. So you can see Q node goes back to here, which is the quantum circuit. And then weight shapes is right above. And that's a function of N layer is the function of weights, which is a function of layers, uh, N layers and N qubits. Okay. So, you know, this is, you know, this is similar to deep learning. Like you have to keep track of all of these, you know, what's going on in the notebook, like on paper and in your head. Are there any questions at this point? Yeah, so and if this isn't clicking just yet and you feel like you just need to take more tutorials, come back to it because, you know, it's the reason why machine learning is so in demand. It's just that it's it's very complicated and it takes a lot of hard work, um, but you just have to stick with it. And it's just like learning a complex set of something that you would, you know, learn um, outside of the work workspace. Right. This is um, it's machine learning. So this next section is similar, um, but it's a, it's a little different from the KISS kit. So here we're going to call a hybrid model. So that's the class that we're working with inside this module. And then this is also uh, customizable. Now, in this case, this is this first section uh, where it starts with self.c layer one. That's this these four, um, you know, vertical, uh, I, I think this would, would be four. Well, it's four outputs for classical. And then these two green boxes relate to self.q layer one, self.q layer two. Now, in this case, they're both identical because it's we're not necessarily using Q layer here, but Q layer is QML.torch, QML.QNN.torch layer, which also uh, is identical to these two here. So these two green boxes are identical. And then again, you need this uh, this second uh, classical layer, which is represented by these top dots here. And you can see that its output is two, so two red dots. And then the the four over here is represented by the output or the number of dimensions um, with the first classical layer right there. And yes, these slides will be up uh, on LinkedIn and the website as well. Now, like I said before, so. I, I, I would watch these penny lane videos and sometimes they would just say like, it's just way harder to do it on the deep learning side than it is the um, the quantum side. Because once you get your circuit down and yes, it takes expertise to do this. The tricky part is like, this is relating to, in this specific case, uh, the half moons data set from SK Learn. And I think it's analogous to other ones, but it's only 
binary for that. And that's where the X1s and X2s are coming from. So this part is a little trickier um, as opposed to just learning the pattern up here from above. And by the way, on this one, I added two more quantum layers and it did improve the performance. And that was from last week. So on this one, um, and I think, you know, a good course to take if, if you want to do this long term would definitely be something with data sets and PyTorch and uh, this type of, of setup here where you have the, you know, the module up here with all the layers. And then the Ford, this seems to be more, more involved is this Ford method right here. So as you can see, the X comp X underscore one equals self that layer one X one that relates to the Q layer one. And then this X underscore two is equal to self that Q layer two up here. Okay. So then this is all happening. And now you have your model and the model is now recognized as not the quantum circuit, but it's this QML.QNN.Torch layer, which is effectively another torch layer. So model equals hybrid model is going to be used in the rest of the notebook. And I, I don't think it's too much in this specific uh, case, too much more quantum than this, right? Like there's some, you know, pip install penny lane. Um, if you want to do other types of, you know, simulators or real hardware, you're going to have to do that. But you know, you're really going to have to understand the the relationships between data sets, the forward method, because as you can see, it's it's different for quantum down here in the forward method than it is up here. So, you know, it's just it's just different. But the code runs. Uh, this is a section of the code, this Penny Lane uh, notebook. So, and in all of these things, I believe, what's this? Yes. Yeah, so. There is no shortage of deep learning models with PyTorch framework. So as I said before, you can get models, I believe from OpenAI, I think you can get models, or I know you can through Hugging Face. You just type in, I want a transformer and I want a convolutional neural network. It, it probably can't do it in quantum yet. And then you say like, you know, uh, you know, vision transformer, you, you know, the specifics behind it. And it does a, a pretty good job. But a lot of times there's a lot of like, you know, it's it's just the it's just the model. It's not a full notebook. So I would recommend to anybody, unless this is like, you know, very, uh, you know, like easy for you to start off with a bunch of demos and then see how you can incorporate, you know, the the torch layers or the, you know, torch connectors and in, in these two, um, you know, Kiskit and Penny Lane and, you know, see what kind of results you can, because I can run. I can run most of the time, but it seems to be the Ford method where if I increase the circuit to a thousand um, layers, which it will do, and on a default that Cuban penny, I can go up to 30. And in that point, it should really slow down the whole thing, but it didn't. Then I know something's not a hundred percent right. Okay. So, you know, that's the essence of that is trying to get a, a fully functional port, you know, which Penny Lane and, and uh, Kiskit have done. So, and as I said before, so this is summing everything up. So this is, um, you know, for Kiskit, the abstract class is this neural network and everything. So estimator and QNN and um, sampler QNN, they are under neural net network. So there's I think you can only do regression with sampler QNN and estimator QNN. You can only do, I'm sorry, with sampler QNN, you can do classification or regression. And then with um, estimator QNN, you can only do classification. So these are machine learning terms. And then, yeah, so look at it like that. Like you're setting all of this up. You're defining the, the circuit with the Q node and it behaves like any other torch.nn layer. So like I said, you can scan a lot of these demos and once it's in, once it's in, you know, the, the model into the model and into the forward method, and then it says return the hybrid model. I don't believe there's much after that in quantum after that. I think it's just, you know, there's training, you know, cause <laughs> that's the whole point of this, but you know, it's to get everything into Pythonic terms, um, you know, and, and PyTorch too. So you don't have to worry about Kiskit and Penny Lane after this point. Okay, that's how it looks. So uh, like I said, like 
the the talks that I've seen before, you know, for Penny they said like, you know, the deep learning experts are going to be, you know, of great use here. These emerging models, these top 10, you know, on, on charts uh, to start porting a lot of the, the, you know, more quantum ports or more QML ports into it. And, you know, on the medical side, it's definitely, you know, think uh, to, to do standards, you've used at MedMNIST, it's free, you can download it. Um, there's 2D and 3D sets, Google Kaggle, and, you know, for other reasons too, if you're in finance or transportation, you can use Google Kaggle, and then healthcare uh, data, healthdata.gov, and then Lonnie are more for like the advanced use of it all. So... <sighs> I think that's it for that. So that's the references. Now, was there anything, because I know a lot of you have this specific bent and I try to stay agnostic as I can. So I'll, I'll be on Kiskit, uh, Penny Lane and Circ uh, next week for episode 100. Um, but is there anything that you use one of these libraries that you had um, any questions with? And then I'll put the name of the site and the last two episodes are really helpful too. If you're just now picking up last week, I did 26 of the Penny Lane uh, demos of the machine quantum machine learning ones, improved most of them, ran, ran them all. Uh, and then there's like a Penny Lane how to this next week is going to be like a hundred tips between the three platforms. So kiss, get Penny Lane and, and Cirque and uh, you know, to get up and running, I would say. So if you're kind of on the fence, I would definitely go for it. You know, once classical community, you know, catches on to this, they're proficient in machine learning. And like I said, they're, you know, um, once they learn quantum circuits, then it's like, then they have it all. <laughs> so I put the name of the website too. And let's see here. So we have new, new faces too. And we got returning faces as well. So, uh, Raphael or Edwin, anything? Uh, then if not, so David or Samuel? So, you know, just based on previous weeks, you know, it's, if you want to do quantum, you're going to have to learn classical, right? There's, I don't think there's much of a market just to do quantum algorithms. I mean, we have a number that are exponential speed ups. I think that most of it's going to be with, you know, ports, uh, this hybrid code, you know, in a vacuum, you might be able to run some quantum code, you know, that's not as machine learning, but, you know, with machine learning being, you know, or QML being the primary application for quantum computing, it, it, it helps to get over that hump, right? So, you know, the, the two examples that I showed and, you know, how the variables re relate to each other in classes. And then uh, anybody else that's new? So are returning, so Carlos or Diego? And, I can also, I'll put it also in the chat. So I have the last, I just got to put the finding, uh, the final touches on this specific one, but yeah. So I put the website as well and, uh, sorry, kiss get penny lane. Okay. So now I'm assuming that most people want to do quantum machine learning. So I, I can speak a lot on that on the other ones you know I, I know you know general code and if there's a specific application that you're trying to do uh that would help too but to start out i would actually start with kiskit so start out with um a bunch of the tu tutorials you're, you're going to have to know uh gates so quantum gates which are matrices which are is like linear algebra you're going to have to know circuits, uh, which is like the whole thing together, you know, number of wires and, and these types of things too. And I would actually, I, I had some difficulties actually printing that Kiskit circuit because the, you know, the, there's different types of styles of creating circuits. And I haven't found a good AI to just, you know, put in what, what you think would be good enough to print a circuit 
and it has to be in a specific format. So again, I've, co I've covered a bunch of these. I've covered visualization. I've definitely covered gates and circuits, those types of things. So, and there's anything else, you know, that I could uh, help with, with that. And if it's just way over your head, I mean, it's just, I, it just takes time, you know, don't give up and, and think of it like a block. Like you have your quantum circuit, your Q node and penny lane, you know, these types of things. And then you're trying to make it uh, fit into the, uh, the, the model. So the model is typically like you have a transformer model on the Kiskit one. You saw we had a convolutional neural network. Now we're putting an extra quantum layer into that. And to do that, we had to set up the dimensions before and after. Okay. So in that first, you know, setting up the, uh, on the right-hand side of that slide, that was basically to get it in. And once it's in, it's, it's a, Pyth it's a special Python function or it's, you know, it's, well, it's actually torch, but it, it's in torch format. So it's not in, you know, just kiss it how you would normally manipulate a, a circuit. Um, so DICOM images shouldn't be an issue. So there was a question. So Raphael put in the, in the chat, um, you know, I don't know where the best place is to find out if every single data set is DICOM, but like the stuff that I do with image analysis. So I did an MVP and like 10 iterations and several algorithm prototypings and efficiencies. It's, you know, I, I get these data sets from Kaggle and then, you know, the next steps up would be like, oh, okay, now do I want to use quantum with image data plus genomics or proteomics, those types of things. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I could look afterwards as far as, you know, if I use in specific DICOM images, but I know it's a, a very popular uh, format for images. And then anybody else? So um, I saw people came a little bit later. And uh, so Edwin or, or uh, Ben? Hi. Uh, it's really interesting, Kevin, uh, all the things you're sharing. I'm, I'm really loving that, that uh, the series on ones that focusing on, on, the, on the tools. Yeah. So, but. Uh, of late, I've been reading uh, uh, about the entropy, and uh, I don't know whether you've done a lot on that, read a lot of that, uh, especially as regards to how it can be be leveraged for quantum computing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I saw a talk on this. Patrick Coles. Uh, do you know Patrick Coles? He he used to work at Los Alamos National Lab. Now he works at Normal Computing. And he would touch on this and he actually said, and I don't, I, I don't know if it was a GANS or something like that, but he, he basically says, you know, the entropy actually increases with the observer, you know, in a specific case. And this was for, I want to say thermodynamic, like quantum, uh, you know, QPUs, those types of things. So that was interesting. Um, and the only other place, like I said, is mostly GANS where I see it, where you know, my, my loss functions of my generator, um, you know, go down the, the ones that's increase the ones that's making better images. And then the discriminator on mine, you know, the, the ones that I ran would go up the, the loss. So lower loss is better, you know, with, um, with the generator, but yeah, I, if you could be more specific as far as what you mean by entropy. Oh, the, 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 the degree of just uh, measuring the randomness in uh, or the unpredictability in a, in a system. And then are you talking about the, like the quantum, the QPU or? No, uh, just generally, maybe uh, as, a, as a regarding for the quantum, just quantum physics and maybe how it's being used because uh, like you understand superposition and how it's helpful, like compared to classical, you know? Okay. Well, yeah, I, yeah. it's sounding like, you know, quantum computers have this advantage of being probabilistic or, you know, they're really good at random number generators, those types of things. But I haven't really taken it much further than that, than, you know, they can create great 
uh, Q, uh, QKD keys, quantum key distribution, just because the nature of quantum computers and sometimes actually noise in certain applications helping, you know, because it has quantum noise. But yeah, I haven't really taken it too much further than that as far as, you know, measuring en entropy as opposed to, I mostly run into it like using a quantum computer because it has entropy. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. It's still interesting because uh, I think my understanding was that, like, for example, an idea like, uh, like, uh, how what they do in annealing, you know, finding that low energy state. Like, I was watching some videos from D Wave and they were saying that that that, that low energy state from I think it's the Hamiltonian, right? And it's like what they use, uh, like to kind of find uh, the, that optimal, oh, okay. optimal state. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's like I said, like there's certain like you could do a quantum algorithm for every classical algorithm, but a lot of times it just it, the cost fa favors classical, and you're trying to find the specific reason to use quantum. So, yeah, I, I you know those. These are these are things that are known. Like we have exponential quantum algorithms, but you insert them into a model or you know a notebook or demo, and then there's the speed to convert classical data, and then the output to measure kind of wipes it away. So that's an issue there too. Um, but yeah, as far as like, I mean, I think of you know delta G, you know delta S, these types of things is what you might be referring to. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. Think I'll, I'll check out the name. I'll check out the name. You said Peter, Peter Cole. Uh, Patrick Coles. Patrick uh, Coles. Yeah, C O L E S. I had shared a couple of weeks ago. He, and I, I put one of them in the chat as far as the the discussion last week. I'll share the Patrick Coles. Let's see which one this is. Uh he he had a good um, rubric for how to create a good variational algorithm. So I'm going to share that one too. And a lot of these things, you know, it's just like there'll be a, a new paper and it's just like, well, this is the first time we saw this. And then there needs to be more papers. In other words, like to understand the physics of quantum bits and data sets and accuracies and those types of things. So in my opinion, it, it's going to get a lot better uh, just because the the way that we have, you know, quantum machine learning now is is very simple. It's just based on the rotations of of qubits. So if you have, uh, like, you know, x, y, and z, I, I don't think are trainable, but r, x, r, y, r, z are, and you can set set the initial angle, and it'll manipulate all of them so that the loss is the lowest, you know, the loss function, um, based on the angles of those specific qubit gates. But then why can't you like you know, wiggle the gates, or why couldn't you do that in a like, say, for instance, in in a across a gradient, you know, like it's 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 kind of just getting started, in in my opinion. So, yeah, I mean, it's it works, you know, for sure, and it runs and all that type of stuff. But once we get, say, for instance, like Xanadu researchers and there's uh, Kiskit researchers, there's um, Kristen Temme, T E M M E. So once all that, you know, gets more under control as far as like, it's not just like, you know, we figured it out. It's more like, oh, okay, now we truly understand how the data is going to interact with the qubits and, you know, what's the best way of having this, this quantum circuit train as opposed to just like, okay, we tried this angle, we tried that, we tried this. Um, and in my opinion, I was going to add this, but it's kind of like, you know, not for that specific slide you know, learning from deep learning and, you know, what all of the approaches have they taken to get better trainable values, to get better accuracy, those types of things. So I'll put into the chat here, the Patrick Coles. So if you haven't seen this, and even IBM researchers and, you know, uh, Google researchers, they go to this thing called Q, uh, QHack. So QHack is a Xanadu or Penny Lane thing. And it went on from 21, 22, and this year as well. And they're all videos, like figure 30 or 40 minute long videos, at least, of the best uh, quantum machine learning experts in the world from those three institutes, Los Alamos National Lab is big with it. 
so you can do you know a bunch of these videos and it's uh it's it's it helps uh kind of pick up some of the terms and and the importance just how I'll stress certain things I learned from them so but yeah that that slide I put in there in the chat there that's a specific slide from uh, QHack 2022 and then this is uh Patrick Coles so he's doing more of the thermodynamics and as it relates I think it's a thermodynamics quantum processor something like that and it has potential benefits too. So he was working for uh, Lanel at this time in, in the one I put in the chat. So it helps. Awesome. So anybody else that we haven't heard from? Thank you so much for, for all these resources, Kevin. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. And it's it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint. And the the faster you can get into code, the better. And uh, that's what's going to make things happen. It's really not, I mean, there's, you know, the business behind startups and these types of things, but my opinion is it's best to just start running demos, you know, um, Kiskit demos, uh, Circ demos. Uh, I think Quantinium has some demos and try to just make them better, right? Make them better. And then, you know, uh, work on ports, you know, using these tools, you know, to get them into a uh, pie torch of existing models and then see if you can find anything, you know, it takes, it's a lot of hard work. And well, what will you advise about, um, I think that there are, there are a few, uh, uh, there, I mean, there are two like kind of areas you can get into. Um, I mean, either the hardware side or the software side. I think most of what you're saying with the code is mostly the software. What about the hardware? Any opportunities? I'm seeing mostly it, it prefers engineers, mostly electrical engineers and people with a physics background. Yeah. Well, my guess is that you're you're talking about, say, for instance, if you were to work for a company that works on hardware as opposed to starting a startup and focusing yeah, yeah. on hardware. It yeah. right, like you would work for say KISS or IBM and work on hardware. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so the in the first case, uh, there's actually Friday mornings here, so at nine Eastern, so which is a noon uh, Eastern time. Sorry, <laughs> nine Pacific, noon Eastern. Kiskit has a series on YouTube, so just type in Kiskit on YouTube, and then if you can attend that time, I definitely would. A lot of those talks tend to be hardware focused, so most of the industry or a good portion of it, at least, is focused on, hey, you know, we think this could happen tomorrow. We could fix error correction or significantly improve it. Or at least it, it's like the hope of doing it, especially with like, you know, gate-based superconducting qubits, which is IBM. And, you know, it's, it's a productive exercise, but I'm, you know, I'm more in like the simulator camp where it's just like, you know, just use GPU quantum simulators because they're slower. And then once we understand the physics, then... You know, a lot of times you don't need huge circuits in theory to accomplish a task. The Kiskit dem the Kiskit one I went over with the code, that's a two qubit circuit in a convolutional neural network. And then um like 100 percent accuracy on MNIST, but it's only a selection of images. It's not 60,000 images. So, anyways, the loss was good. And like I said, with three or four of my initial first stabs at it, I couldn't make it much better because I can't change much, um, you know, was making the, you know, variational layer. It's only two qubits. So I can't change entangling uh, patterns as, as much as I want to. So, yeah, that's what I would suggest is just like, even if you don't know what you're doing, just run it, just run the demo and then go find the, the code for the, the quantum part. And then based on the knowledge that you have, then just start updating things. So you know, double the layers or double the qubits is usually trickier, but sometimes you can I, without, you know, much other fuss, uh, changing it from X to Y, you know, um, changing the, uh, CERC has good simulators. So there's CERC dot, um, Q sim and there's CERC dot simulator. And when I switched from CERC dot simulator to CERC dot Q sim, my runtime, I think, was almost twice as fast. This, these are Google 
simulator, Google quantum simulators. So some of it you'll see in literature, like, okay, I, you know, this looks awesome and it says it's much better than its predecessor simulator, but you know, it, it always helps to run it and uh, that type of stuff. But, you know, if it's just too much of a task to go from here to like, you know, your, your end goal, you know, just start with small chunks, right? So run other people's code. And I, I think the best thing is just to try to modify their code and run it and then see what the loss is, see what the accuracies are, you know, those types of things. So both, you know, all these do, all three of them, Kiskit, you know, Penny Lane and Cirque, uh, give you that option on most of them. Sometimes they'll try the already 100% accuracy, but most of them you can improve. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, and then Ben, did you have something? Uh, hi, Kevin. Hi, everyone. Uh, do you hear me well? Yeah. So I just, uh, yeah, I just want to ask. I'm, I'm, I'm new to this field, and I want to know what's the um. The importance or what's the what's uh if we use like uh like uh cascades and all these libraries uh and using them with like a deep learning and by source and all that stuff uh so what's the uh what we can get benefit from this yeah yeah i i would say now like say if you're a leading researcher now and you're working on a paper right because there's been these first waves of papers you know off you know, these past several years have been good, but not like something like, oh, okay, this is awesome. If you, if you truly understand the quantum physics and, and create the algorithm or the circuit that is best for that data set, that's, that's the hope right there is, you know, use a quantum simulator, uh, you know, they're free, you know, if you need more speed, uh, just run a GPU. Now, the other thing is just, there's a lot of this that's uh, going on in preparation. So say if there was a breakthrough, like, uh, you know, several orders of magnitude, less noise in a quantum computer. And you're just getting ready to run your circuit on a better quantum computer because uh, some quantum, most quantum simulators can't, in theory, can't go nearly as high in, in qubits as a real quantum computer, but real quantum computers have noise issue. Um, you know, there's cost, there's availability issues as well. So I would say mostly those two camps, like, you know, they've, Maria Schall at Xanadu has come on and she says, you know, we've gotten better performance for sure. And then, you know, it's just taking it to the next level. All right. That's, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And, you know, as far as just getting in it and, and coding, it's just, it's just one of those things, you know, um, you could join forums, you know, there's a, a good KISSKIT Slack forum. So it's Q-I-S-K-I-T. And sometimes people ask me <laughs> to help them with their account, which I don't have control over, but, you know, you can help people, which will accelerate your learning too. like study what their problem is and then fix it for them. Um, it, it doesn't sound very glamorous, but that's, that's a way, or that's one of the ways. Is, is there any tutorial or resources for like for very beginner, uh, you know, um, for someone who's just started in this field and want to know the basic things? Yeah, um, I, a lot of it you're just going to have to pick up from other people talking to. Like there's a Chicago meetup, there's mine, there's um, Washington, D.C., Toronto. Things are probably start kicking back up with school here in North America. And uh, you'll learn a lot there. But as I mentioned before, you really want to start with uh, circuits and gates. So a quantum circuit is composed of gates. Now, a gate in, in quantum computing is not physical, it's software, so it's just a matrix. So every time at that time series, you know, up and down the qubits there, it's, it's going to um, rotate the qubit in a certain way. So say over the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. So, and just watch a bunch of uh, YouTube videos. Now, my, my path, that's what I did. You can also go through certifications and you know, you know, Kiskit, like I said, tends to be the one that's more uh, beginner friendly, I would say. But it's just, if you love watching YouTube videos, and you learn well from, you know, other people talking, I, I would definitely, you, you wouldn't just want to do just one thing, 
right? Like it, it's kind of like um, everything because <laughs> it, yeah. it, to get over the humps, you know, like say to like run your first circuit and then, you know, modify a bunch of stuff with new data and like, you know, charts and, and graphs and all that kind of stuff is that um, it takes a lot. It, it really does. Because everything's not like a hundred, everything's not like, you know, like you still have to find some things in literature and, and, uh, you know, it's not like as, uh, it's, it's not a huge market, like uh, uh, deep learning is uh, quite yet. Yeah. Yeah. Then, so Edwin put into the chat, Silicon Valley quantum meetup. Uh, I don't know if you were on the last one, Edwin, Edwin, I was on that on the last one, but I, I haven't seen a more recent, I haven't seen an update to it. And the gentleman, if you're thinking of the same person, it's, uh, I think Dominic. Anyway, so it's, he studies quantum computing and those types of things. But, you know, if you think you'll be in it for the long haul, I would definitely study the libraries, right? So study Penny Lane, study Kiskit, and then find some way to present on it. And then after that, find some way to develop. Because anytime you can teach somebody or anytime you could help somebody on the forum, that helps too. It's uh, it's hard to be in between, you know, as far as getting uh, substantial work done. It's kind of like you have to be on the uh, leading edge. Right. Uh, what's the, like? What's the difference between Kiskit and the other library, the Ben? Or what's the name? Yeah, yeah. So Kiskit is an all-out thing, and it's more of a you know, platform. Uh, Penny Lane is just, is just quantum machine learning. Now they touch on other things that, you know, impact QML, but Kiskit offers free access to I, this IBM to quantum computers, like smaller ones, like five or seven qubits. Um, you can also get free, uh, you also do get free notebook. They've changed some policies though. I, I don't know, C certain countries don't get, you know, free access to cloud notebooks. So yeah, I'll run, I try to run all my Kiskit stuff in their cloud. They just did a big update and they, some hardware updates, but as far as like the broad depth of services, Kiskit has it and they have, um, you know, Kiskit dynamics and Kiskit, you know, which is like the physics of uh, quantum bits. And then, um, you know, the metal, Kiskit metal, like how it's to help you actually design uh, quantum processing units, right? So they the only thing I found with Kiskit is they tend to update a lot. So, you know, as far as like something running one day and something not the other day, they just have more working parts. And I made up my mind, I just want to do medical and quantum machine learning. So a lot of that, those, you know, tools that I need are coming from Penny Lane. And then I'll, I'll find stuff like this past week in Kiskit that I like with a, you know, it's like a real neural network with, you know, the uh, quantum layer in it, as opposed to the penny lates model, which is, you know, more simple. So, yeah, but to start off, I think most people and myself would say, you know, start off with uh, Kiskit. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm just my sorry if I ask a lot of questions. Uh, my last question is about: Is there any like free cloud like collab or something for quantum uh, ML? Like we can use it for to develop some algorithms. Well, if you like, cannot get onto Kiskit, by the way, I think you, I'm getting like eight gigs, which is a fair amount of of RAM. Um, like your total whatever when you run stuff, and I think it's storage too. Uh, if you don't want to use Kiskit, then Colab, you know, with the ports that I presented on today, the ports, a lot of them, you know, they're written in uh, PyTorch and Penny Lane, or I'm sorry, PyTorch and Python. And then you can send them straight to a Colab notebook. So I know Colab is really popular, right? Like these are big websites and it's just one option straight to Colab. Yeah. So I use Colab. So it's basically free on a CPU. If you want to use like a TPU, I think it's like two bucks an hour. I think, uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, was it 20 cents an hour? And then uh, like a V100, which is my go-to, that's like 50 cents an hour, like 54 cents. And then the A100 is like a buck 30 an hour. 
but I've had issues with the quantum code and the A100 or, and actually any GPU, but the V100 was better. So yeah, collab. Um, and then I don't know, I just go whatever works and I don't really switch a lot. So, you know, as far as what else is out there, uh, Kaggle, do you know Kaggle? They have competitions and yeah. I've, I've seen some QML stuff on Kaggle. If you run out of, uh, room in that notebook you can chain notebooks so just there's some way of uh you know say this at the end of the code just chain to the next one and it's, it's google so i don't know how much different it is from google collab but yeah there's v vs code i don't know if anybody uses vx vs code in their journeys um, here but you know just you know, the key is, is not to get overwhelmed and just to start with something, you know, just use discretion and say, this looks like a good notebook to run. I'm just going to run it and see what happens. Um, it might not be what your dream is, but, you know, it's, it comes in stages, you know, so yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't all come at once, I would say. Uh, anybody else? So Samuel or Raphael? And uh, yeah, just, you know, keep an eye out. I, I think the quantum stuff will pick back up again. I When I first started in 21, there was a little, you know, buzz with it. And, you know, I think the closer you are to code and the less you are from like, you know, headlines and these types of things that you can't control and, you know, <laughs> They don't want you part of, and you're not really part of that. <laughs> you know, it's best to be off kind of like that rogue, uh, you know, you know, programming and QML and figuring stuff out that a few other people know how to do. So that's my take on that. And uh, if not, so this is, let's see here. Awesome. So any other last questions or comments, feel free to, so you can download the chat, which I think has the PDFs and all that triple dot in the chat. And then uh, you can download that. And I'll also put a little guide. So I'll put the penny lane guide in. Um, so this will say something like how to succeed. And here. So I'll give you a sec to, to download that if you want that. But you know, it's just like with any language, it's not you, it's, it's what already exists. So you have to be adaptable to, you know, this is how it is. Like, <laughs> you know, qml.qnn.torchconnector. You know, whatever, that's how it is, you know? And it's, that's the thing with the language is it's less adaptable to what you want to do, but it's what everybody else is using. So Awesome. Um, so yeah, this has been discussion 99, discussion 100 next week uh, for Python, PyTorch, quantum machine learning ports models for potential medical use. My name is Kevin Koshak. I'm the founder and CEO of Chemical Q Device. And uh, yeah, this has been September 7th, uh, 2023. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. Have a good night and have a productive rest of the week. Take care.